The Ujjiran Gay Uttamnu on the third day com, uh, is also performed. Then commemoration and adoption of a benevolent baby, we will talk about that. The Namgaran custom, whether to call the dead person baby or Sawasti Herbert. The adoption of the son, if this is as no son, called Palak. The fourth day Hoshbam prayer at the time when Chinwad Bridge judgment takes place. The judgment is supposed to be taken place by Mitra Meher, the judge, Rashnu for the justice and Ashta for the truth. The early morning Uttamnu plus Afghans and Bajis are performed. Then family and close friends abstain from meat for three days. And the ceremonies are then continued on 4th, 10th, 30th and anniversary. And many people keep on doing the ceremonies on anniversary days for many, many years. So, now we come on number 30, Saroshnu Patru, which is done in Ivisutrum Gay. As I said, it could be done on three nights if the body is dying, is dead on the early morning and disposed of in that afternoon, then you do Saros Patru that night also. The two Mobits perform the ceremony in the bungalow or in a house or in a dharema. A tray with eight flowers and pure water karasya in a pot is placed in front of Jyoti, chief Mobit. No other fruits or anything else is requested or required. A Furganyu is placed in front of it and a Ratwi across from him helps to keep the fire burning. They perform Padi Akustis, recite Saros Baj, followed by Avisrutunge and Saroshya Swadi, which is the right uh, prayer to perform in the night and the one of Satayashne. After that they start what the Afringan of Sarosh with a special karda of Saros number seven of the Saroshya Swadi or number two in Saroshya Hadok and they finished after the Dibache, the Jyoti prays and the first time the name of the disease is appropriately taken under the Kshnuman or the invocation of Saroshya the two then recite the seventh karda, do the fl familiar flower ceremony, and there are no offerings performed. The, finally, the company, the ceremony is completed by reciting Patetravani for the soul of the disease. I am on slide number 31. Traditionally, perform on the fourth day dawn for convenience of relatives and friends. It is also performed on the third day Uzirange. So the real uh, Uttamnu is supposed to be on the fourth day dawn, but kind of socially we also do it in the afternoon of third day. A chadar is placed over the rug and all implements required are placed nearby. Number of Mobits take part in the ceremony by performing Padiap Kusti 101 names Saros Baj. The Mobit then stand on the chadar facing west and recite Khorshed and Mehernyas twice. The first as a Farajat, obligatory for themselves, with a complete recital of a Myris Sajangaran to Cafe Mosda. Second time they do it for the departed soul, and they omit a Myris Chan Cafe Mosda because they are the ones for the good uh, welfare and health of the person, and we are talking about the dead person, so we omit this one. We also omit the little lines in Jasame Avangya Mosda just for the same purpose. And then the Doanam Satayasne and the Char Disano Namaskar, homage and two, four directions follow. After that, uh, slide number 32, all the priests perform Hamazor ritual. Hamazor ritual again. These prayers are recited facing west in absence of fire and without Padan. At this point, Afarganyu and implements are laid out. Fire in Afarganyu and oil lamp are lit. Officiating priest sits in front of the fire facing east. All other participating priests sit around the fire. All the priests now recite together liturgies of Uzirange, the proper gay, and the Saroshya's Harag, the proper prayer for this. And at the end of Saroshya's Harag, the senior most priest, usually a Dastur if he's there, or the senior most priest, participating priest, initiates recital of Patet Ravani in the memory of the dead person and the words of Okeawaks, 
other participating priests join him and begin to recite the complete prayer of Patet Ravani, while the Jyoti, the officiating priest, stands up with a chamach in his hand, lowers his badan, and commences the devotional invocation of Dup Niran, which is really the Divaja of the Jashan ceremony with a Sukhar and Loban. All the other participating priests do not wear padan. The word dup is derived from the Sanskrit term dup meaning perfume. In ancient Iran, ceremony was recognized, I'm on slide number 33, as nirange bui dadan, ceremony of offering incense. It is customary to have flower and rose water at the ceremony, and after the ceremony, it is given to all the people. You come with a flower tray, you touch it, and then you take some rose water on your hands. It is customary to recite the blessings of Tandurasti after Duke Niran to wish health to the family. In India in olden times, this ceremony and assembly were very important because at the end of the ceremony, relations and friends of the deceased generally announced donations to the charity funds in the Naya or memory of the disease and to commemorate his name. Also, if a Parsi died without an heir, a Palak son is announced after this ceremony uh, on the third day. I am on slide number 34. Another custom is to commemorating the name of a deceased person if he be a great public benefactor. At the conclusion of the Abba ceremony on the third day, head priest generally or in his absence and a Kabar, a leader of the community, proposes before the assemble anjuman, the public assembly, that the name of the deceased public benefactor, whose benefaction of good deeds he enumerates, he commemorated by the community consenting to remember the name of the deceased in all the public religious ceremonies. This proposal is very often just placed before the assembly and without any formal seconding. I am on slide number 35. So, for example, the name of Sir Jamsedji Jijibai, the first Parsi baronet, who rose from very poor circumstances to be a merchant priest of India, and who gave large sums of money in charity, not only for his own co-religionists, but for all sections of the mixed community of India. You can see that still in Bombay, Israel, and other Mofusil towns like Nausari, Surat, etc., is remembered in the religious ceremonies by the whole Parsi community of India in Jashan sign as Bedin Jamshedji, Bedin Jiji Bayeder Yadpa. Also, as a sideline, all Mancheji Faramji, MF Kama Atona Institute ex students like me remember their benefactor, said Mervanji Mancheji Kama, and his father Mancheji Faramji Kama in all their religious ceremonies as a gratitude for helping them to be a Mabit in this wonderful uh, Kama Atunan Institute as I have gone through for nine years. We mention in all the prayers that I perform, Bedin Mervanji, Bedin Mancheji, and Bedin Mancheji, Bedin Faramji. I am on slide number 36, and now we are talking about Ushenge, uh, the dawn Utamnu. The whole thing is very similar, except the prayers are different, and I'm just going to skip to the prayers there, Saros Baj, Ushenge, and Saros Sheshharov, which is in the middle of the slide. At the time, again, the uh, Afghani is brought in, oil is, uh, lamp is lit. All priests stand up, though now it is a little different than the afternoon uh, Utamnu lower their padan and recite Atash Niyais and Dovaram Satayashna together. After performing Hamazur once again, each or other, they sit down. The senior most priest initiates Patet Ravani, as we talked before, and the chief Mabit then starts with the Chamaj and performs the Duk Nira. All priests then recite Doa Tandarasti and Hoshbam, Hoshbam together because it is the correct of time to uh, recite this very beautiful short prayer. So, now we are coming to the Chaharun prayers, the fourth day prayer. At the daybreak of the fourth day, the Chaharun service is held. The word Chaharun is derived from Chehar, the Farsi word for number four, 
I am on slide number 30. I am on slide number 37. The service is traditionally initiated before sunrise, but after the day breaks. Generally, it is commenced about 40 to 45 minutes before sunrise. Period is known as Hoshbam, meaning shining dawn. This initial ceremony includes the recital of offering of the Hum Yazat and that of Saros, followed by the three offerings of Adafavas, Buzorgan, and Hafta Meshaspan. Initial ceremony is performed after doing Padiyap Kusti, 101 names, Sarosbas, Havangya prayers. By the time this ceremony is over, the sun is out, and as per the tradition, it's complete service of Afringan with three kardas of Ardafavas, Dham, and Sarosh together, with the three Afrins and Doha Tandarasti, followed by Farokshi and Satum is performed. I am on slide number 38. Traditionally, four bhajis are performed on the Ushinge of Charum day. This traditional bhaj ritual is performed before sunrise on the fourth day to propitiate the divinities who will be involved in the final judgment of the soul. The drone ceremony is performed for Rashne Astadiyaza, Mino, Ram, Sarosh and Adafavars before the Uttana ceremony of Ushinge is over. During the Baja of Ardafar was a set of clothes traditionally called Siao is consecrated. Specifically, it is during the recital of the Kardaf Ardafar was, which is a part of the Farwar Indiyash, that this consecration takes place. Traditionally, this Siao, also known as Jam E Ashodat, the gift of the, of the clothes, are then given to the family of the priest as Ashodat. I am on slide number 39. The prayers that follow after the fourth day are on Dehum, Siroj, and Salroj. This is in our Dibache of the Afringan, uh, Charum, Dehum, Siroj, Salroj. Tenth day, fourth day we already talked about, Dehum, tenth day, thirtieth day, and a year day after the death. And then we also repeat this thing on Farvadegan, Farok, Farvadin Maino, Farvadin Roj, and Muktar. A complete service of this offering and perform on these days. Corresponding badges are performed traditionally. We do the same thing on Farvarigan Day in Bombay. Many of the people, many, many people go to the Dungarwadi for these prayers on Farvadin Ma and Farvadin Raj. And many of them also go on each Farvadin Raj. And then 10 days of Mukta, they are also performed. This completes the complete ceremonies of Indian subcontinent. And we are on slide number 40, coming to the practice in North America. On 41, I am just giving the five different ceremonies group, and the death ceremony in the first one, social religious one. We talked about the two parts of it, disposal of the body ceremony and uh, disposal. And the ceremonies relate to the soul of the disease. And now I am on slide number 44 where we talk some realities between India versus North America. We all came from India, an Indian subcontinent, Pakistan, wherever from, maybe Bangladesh now. They were all India way back, uh, way back when. We usually came in the old days in boat. You see a boat named SS Oran, say August 5, 1960, when yours truly came from Bombay here. And then the, most of them now came by the plane, Air India usually. And this migration started after 1960s quite a bit. So on the left hand side I'm giving some realities of uh, India. It is the biggest country with our biggest population. Several Atashkades, several Dakmas, several Bunglis and Sagris, and a vast Dungarwari, beautiful place with Nasesalars in Mumbai under Bombay Parsi Panchay. Now come to the reality of the North America. We have scattered our population over a huge vast area in all of Canada and America. Few Atashkades, no Dakmas, no Banglis and Sagris and no Dungarwari. However, and I want to stress this, however we in North America try to follow all religious principles as far as possible with necessary adaptations. Slide number 45. 
I am showing the two parts, the disposal of the body ceremony, major adaptation required in North America, burial or cremation is the only practical option, ceremonies usually perform in a funeral home. The ceremonies relating to soul, we have two options here. Some family opt to request the Panthaki of the family in Mumbai to perform all ceremonies in Mumbai or in other towns that they come from. Whereas if you perform the ceremony in North America, let me tell you, all ceremonies perform exactly as in India with slight modifications because we don't have yesnas and vandidas and bajis and shiav. But if you call your Panthaki to perform this one, they perform it in India. So now I'm on slide number 46 again for the book of my very good friends Jehan and Hadi. On 47 now I want to talk about a little bit about this book and the foreword is written by none other than Firoz M. Kotwal, the high priest. By the way, he was my classmate for nine years in the Kama Institute also. The book, he says, the book, and, and I quote, the book entitled Understanding and Practice of Obsequies is a condensed manual on Zoroastrian rites and rituals prepared by two seasoned Edward, Edwards, Jehan Bagli and Adi Unwala, for the benefit of priests who serve the Parsi Irani Zoroastrians of the diaspora. And he ends the forest saying, authors have exerted themselves admirably to make the monograph lucid and 